Hi, this is Dr. Alan Mendelson from Eye Surgeons and Consultants in Hollywood, Florida. Today I'm going to talk about keratoconus. Keratoconus, what it is, is as follows. The cornea is the clear dome over the eye. Theoretically, the cornea should be baseball shaped. But in actuality, most people, the cornea is a little bit football shaped, and we call that astigmatism. With keratoconus, it's something different. The cornea is shaped more like a cone, hence the name kera, meaning cornea, conus, shaped like a cone. So one in 2,000 people have keratoconus. So what's the scenario? The scenario is usually in adolescent years, teenagers, and then even people early 20s, mid 20s will all of a sudden notice a sudden drop in their vision. Of all the people that I see coming in for second or third opinions, the most common scenario is somebody with a red eye and it just doesn't clear. But the second most common is probably keratoconus. What will happen is a teenager or someone in their early 20s will notice their vision is really slipped. Usually they're not comfortable driving and having difficulty in a classroom or, or a lecture hall. Productivity is declining. They usually go to a retail outlet, get a pair of glasses. The glasses are better than nothing, but even this is very unsatisfactory. They'll find that, for example, when they're in a car with other passengers, they're the last one to be able to see the road signs, having difficulty seeing that lecture hall board, etc. And then they'll come in for a second or third opinion. So on examination with keratoconus, what I'll find are usually several different signs. So the first is I'm going to hold a picture up with the keratoconus. This is with the eye looking down. With the eye looking down, it's cone shaped. And then there'll be an indentation of the lower eyelid that happens to be go by the name of Munson signs. So that's a positive Munson sign. So again, when the eyes looking down, I tell a patient, look down to your toes. You'll see that very significant indentation of the lower eyelid. The second is with keratoconus, there will be iron deposits within the cornea. So if we turn on a cobalt blue light, there'll be a brown ring at the base of the keratoconus. So it's a little bit subtle, a little bit hard to tell, but it, here's actually iron deposition patient with keratoconus. A third thing that I'll look for, usually it's in a little bit more advanced, but there'll be little lines or a little bit of scar tissue, and this is referred to as Boat's lines. So most commonly I'll see that Munson sign, we're looking down, the lid's indent, indented, the iron ring, which is called a Fleischer ring, or the Vogt's lines, and usually we'll see two of the above or three of the above with keratoconus. So it used to be that those were the ways we made the diagnosis. Well, now there's newer technology. It's called corneal topography. What happens is, just like there are topographic maps, we get a three-dimensional view of the cornea. Now, for those who are not familiar, this just looks like many different colors, but actually what happens is there is a color scale for elevation. So where I'm pointing that red, in actuality, it's protruding out considerably that there is keratoconus in this patient. Now, when there's marked keratoconus like this patient, it's very easy to pick up with topography. Sometimes that will be much more subtle in which case the clinical examination will always do the trick. Now, why is this important? Because patients who have keratoconus, eyeglasses will be helpful, more helpful than just winging it with nothing. But keratoconus patients in particular do much, much better with contact lenses. Now, the soft lenses are usually marginally helpful, but with gas permeable, hard lenses, piggyback lenses. What happens again, imagine that the cornea is shaped like a cone. Those lenses help kind of smash down the cornea a little bit. So the quality of vision is far better.
the vast majority of people going the route of one of those type of contact lenses, significant improvement. So a very good quality of vision. If none of those work, the hard lenses, the gas permeable or the piggyback lenses, there are now scleral contact lenses, which can be utilized as well. For those where none of the contacts will work, there is now a newer procedure that's been out for the last several years called corneal cross-linking. That's an in-office procedure. Patient lies on their back. This is a schematic. What happens is a medication is placed on the eye called riboflavin. Ultraviolet light is shown into the eye. It's an in-office procedure. And specifically what happens is we are trying to not only strengthen the cornea, but flatten it down. Now, what does that achieve? It does not miraculously correct for perfect vision, but in doing so, the cornea is strengthened. It is a little bit more baseball shaped, so it's much, much easier to wear a contact lens. And frequently with the corneal cross-linking, as a second stage procedure months or a year later, Patients sometimes can have LASIK performed, but one never, never, never wants to do LASIK on someone with keratoconus unless they've had that corneal cross-linking. Now, in the unlikely event that none of the above work, then a cornea transplant certainly can be performed. Of the patients with keratoconus, again, it's about one in 2,000. The vast majority of the patients come teenage years, early 20s. Um, it's always very upsetting when the vision is slipping, but usually, fortunately, by mid-30s, upper 30s, it'll just plateau, and there will not be an increase in that keratoconus. Um, and thank you very much.